Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am here today to show you how I made my first set of cards using the June 2022 sheet load. I hope you'll stick around, see how I created them and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. In yesterday's video, I gave you a look at the brand new sheet load of cards, June 2022. I also shared with you a first look at the set I created for this month and told you how you can download the printable for free. If you haven't yet seen that video, it is linked in that description box below and I call it the debut video. It will probably also be at the end of this video as an end card. Well, today I am back to show you how I made that set of cards. And don't forget, my wonderful team of collaborators will also be joining me today. They will be sharing their take on this month's printable here on YouTube and over on Instagram. Now to see what they have created. Here on YouTube, all you have to do is click on the hashtag in the title and it will pull up all of their videos. And to see them on Instagram, you can search for that same hashtag or you can just click on the link that I have in the description box. I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they created and leave them some love. Now, if you want to show us your sheet load, don't forget about the hashtags at the top for YouTube and Instagram and on TikTok if you're there. And you can also send in a card for the end of the month video. I do have a video with all of those details. It's called Show Us Your Sheet Load Guidelines and it is linked in that description box as well. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the main supplies I'll be using today and then we'll get started creating. In front of me are the main supplies for this month's card. I use this Hello die from Stamp Anything, some off-white cardstock for both of my card bases, and these three pieces of pattern paper from the Graphic 45 Ephemera Queen collection. Now, as I get into the process, if I add any more products or tools, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, feel free to leave any questions you have in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Alrighty, we're gonna get started today by cutting the pattern papers per the cutting guide. To do this, I figure out what is the top of my paper, and then I cut two strips that were four inches tall and one strip that was three inches tall. Then these will get rotated and cut to the size on the cutting guide. Now you will notice when I cut the two strips at the top, I actually did these a little bit different than the cutting guide said. On that first strip, I cut two pieces that were five and a quarter inches wide. And on the next strip, I cut two pieces that were four inches wide. If you look at the cutting guide, you'll notice that I should have cut one five and a quarter and one four inch piece from each of those strips but you know it worked out in the end it doesn't matter but I will cut the next piece of paper like the cutting guide shows now there are quite a few pieces of leftover pattern paper here and you will see me use some of these later for my sentiment I will go ahead and show you how I cut the second piece and I will be using the instructions from those cutting guides. So it starts out the same, except now I'm gonna cut one four inch piece and one five and a quarter inch piece from each of those top two strips. This does leave just a little extra pattern paper on some of these, but again, do it whichever way you feel most comfortable. I finished cutting my papers with that third one and then I moved on to some cardstock. I got out three pieces of off-white cardstock to cut per the CS1 instructions. These will be your largest card base and your sentiment piece. 
I start by cutting these to nine and three quarters inches wide and then rotate it and cut it in half at four and a quarter. Per the printable, we will be scoring and folding these later on, and I do have some special instructions there beside it, but don't worry if you do not have a scoreboard, I will show you later what to do. Next, I'm gonna take that little strip off the end and using a piece of scotch removable tape to hold that in place, I trimmed it to one inch wide, and then for me, I cut it into pieces that were three and three quarters inches. The original sketch calls for three and a half, but to get my fishtail, I will be using a special paper punch and it takes about a quarter of an inch off the end. I cut the next piece of cardstock in the same exact way, so I'll show you that quickly. And then for the third piece, I'm going to reserve that and show you what to do if you do not have a scoring tool. Right now, all I'm going to do is cut this in half at four and a quarter by 11. And finally for the cutting, I got out two more pieces of that same off-white cardstock and cut them per the CS2 instructions. These will end up being the smaller cards and all you have to do for these is cut three pieces that are three and a quarter inches from the top of each cardstock. Once again later, we will be scoring and folding these. Speaking of scoring and folding, I brought in my score buddy and we're going to start with the larger pieces we cut or the CS1. You will want to score these at four and a quarter inches from the left edge. Now technically you could do it four and a quarter from the right as well because once you put in that score line and fold it, you could always flip around the card until it opens correctly. For me, that is going to be where the flap opens to the left. I continued scoring and folding these larger pieces and just a heads up that you do not have to have a score buddy for this. You can use whatever scoring board you have or if your cutter has a scoring tool as well, that is perfect. Next, I brought in the smaller pieces and these are for CS2 and these are super easy. All you do is score these in half, once again at four and a quarter, and then fold them in half. This would be a very easy card to just go ahead and fold in half by hand if your cardstock is light enough weight. Here's a look at how the two pieces will eventually go together. They both open opposite directions. I continued scoring and folding those smaller pieces. And now let me show you what to do if you do not have a scoring tool. In front of me now are the pieces of cardstock that I just cut in half to four and a quarter by 11. All you need to do is go ahead and fold those in half by hand. I did reinforce that crease with a bone folder. And then I'm going to bring in my trimmer and cut one and a quarter inches off one of the flaps. Now you could either cut it off the front where I use my measurement to the left of my cut line or cut it off the back where I use the one and a quarter inch measurement to the right. Either way it doesn't matter because later again you can just flip these around until it opens correctly. Now those little leftover pieces will still need to be cut down so I use the same removable tape cut them to one inch wide and then down to three and three quarters inches. You'll see when I bring in the pieces that I use the scoreboard on that they look exactly like the pieces I just did without a scoring tool. Make sheet load work for you and what you have on hand. Now it's time to make the card kits, and that is just what I call putting together the pieces of paper that will be on each card front. I'm gonna start by choosing the pieces in a diagonal, and you'll notice that there's one from each pattern. And then for the second card, you could do that same exact thing, but for me, I'm gonna skip, and I'm gonna choose one, three, and then back to two. If you do this, each of your cards will look a little bit different. So this is a great way if you want them to be quick and easy, but not necessarily look the same, mix and match these and make the most of those patterns. I continue to do this until I have all of those pattern papers matched up into little card kits. 
Now it's time to get a little sticky and start adhering things. I brought back in both of the card bases as well as the pattern paper pieces and you'll want to make sure that you have your small cards opening correctly and that you put your pattern paper piece on there so it does open. Remember this is going to be a little bit backward. I start by adding adhesive to the smallest piece of pattern paper. Once again, making sure I know where the fold is, I add that to the card front. Then I bring in the main card base. I add the square piece of pattern paper to the flap on the front, and then the larger one goes on the inside. I do try to keep all my borders pretty even there. And then to finish this off, I add adhesive to the small card and center that on the inside as best as possible. And when you go to close it, you will want the small card to go on the outside of that outside card, if that makes sense. While I put the rest of the cards together, I do have a fun little celebration announcement. Up on screen now is going to be a list to all of my channel members who celebrated one year of channel membership in May. I am so thankful for each and every one of these members who support me here and thank you a little bit extra for staying on for a full year. I hope that next year we'll be celebrating two years together. Here's a look at all of the card bases with the pattern paper added. If you follow the sketch and cutting guides, you will notice that the sentiment piece has a fishtail. Now you could go ahead and just leave this as is, round the corners, whatever you want. For me, I'm going to be using this Pick a Banners Punch from Stampin' Up! to add a fishtail in the end of each piece. Now, like I mentioned before, once you punch it, it does take about a quarter of an inch off, so just keep that in mind if you have this punch and you're going to use it. Now, if you don't have a fishtail punch, it's super easy to cut your own. What you'll do is just snip a little way into the center of the end and then cut in at an angle from each side. Now you might have to cut these down a little bit more like to get them to the three and a half inches wide, but this is definitely something you can do on your own. I though went ahead and added all of my fishtails with that punch. You might have noticed when I shared my card yesterday that I did not stamp a sentiment per the sketch. I actually used a die cut. What I did is I used this Hello from Stamp Anything and I took it off camera and cut three from each of the pattern paper scraps in front of me. Also, while I was off camera, I cut two copies for each of those in the ivory cardstock or the off-white cardstock, I guess. And what I did was I added two of these to the back of each pattern paper die cut for a little added dimension. I did do a majority of these off screen, but I did want to show you how I did one set. I used this Elmer's Craft Bond spray adhesive and I sprayed that on the back of one pattern paper copy and one off-white copy. I did take those to a more well-ventilated area to spray that, so make sure if you're going to try this you do the same. But once I had the adhesive on the back, I placed the two off-white pieces together and then I added the pattern paper on top. When I was working on these off screen, I would leave the previous set underneath the stamp block to give it time to dry while I was working on the next one. Before I can add those sentiments to my card front, I did need to go ahead and adhere the fishtail banner, so that's what I did next. I added adhesive to the back and then I aligned it probably a half an inch from the bottom of the small card and aligned with that left fold. 
This is definitely one of the areas where you can make it your own by moving the location of that fishtail banner or changing the size and shape altogether. Now we're going to get those die cut words added to the card fronts. Now here I did play around a little bit with the placement and I decided to have it kind of across the center on there. To add these to the card fronts, I brought in my art glitter glue in the fine tip glue bottles and I added some lines and dots on the back of this piece. Then I got it placed on the card front and I helped press that down with that same stamp block I used previously. You will want to give these time to dry and a little added extra pressure. I did forget to mention how I chose which die cut would go on each card. For that first one, because the background pattern paper would be the yellow, I used the red die cut. And on this second card, I'm going to use the yellow die cut since the background is red. Now on the final ones with the floral background, I just kind of placed both hellos up to the card and decided which one would stand out better from the background. And then I adhered those together and finished off the other two cards. Now normally I might add some bling, but I thought with all of those pretty pattern papers and that bold floral that this would just be a good finish to the card. And here are some close-up looks. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together the June 2022 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget now to go visit all of my collaborators by using the hashtag in the title or the Instagram link in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.